Hello again, my friends. This is Kunita, and I greet you warmly, warmly in the name of our risen Lord, Yeshua, on this bright and warm and sunny Sunday afternoon here in central Ohio. It's going to be a warm one today up in the upper 80s. I suppose we might even hit 90. There's a chance, they say, and no rain in sight. So I do have some work out in the yard that I was supposed to get get on during the weekend here and uh it's been kind of hot so i haven't got to it yet i'll have to go out later in the evening it's not a lot i have to cut away some weeds that i had i had killed last weekend and uh got to pull them out and and get them set so i can bag them up and get rid of them uh not too much i think i'm going to wait probably till the uh till the early evening when the temperature goes down and it'll be a little less stressful perhaps a few less cars and people coming by as well that never hurts in the meantime, what better way to spend a uh, Sunday afternoon than having a chat with my friends? You know, one of the most contentious issues within the body of Christ is the supposed disagreement between Paul and James on the issues of faith and works. Now, the whole idea of there being this disagreement and this split within the doctrine, within the Word of God, was propagated, started, and continued by unbelievers who have come within the body, within the church, within the fold, in order to, to disrupt and get us arguing with each other so that we may forget that the Word of God is a singularity of truth. If we research the Word and we study in the Spirit, we will understand that there is no disagreement between these two apostles, these two men. Paul is addressing faith unto salvation, how I come to know God. And in this way he attacks the works of self-righteous legalism the works of the flesh, so to speak, and those who think they can earn their way into heaven by these means. And we all know people like this. They'll tell you that, uh, I've lived a good life. I think my pluses outweigh my, my bads. They think that there's some kind of scale of justice, and if something comes up on the high end rather than the low end, good works, that that's going to get them through and into the kingdom of God. This is what Paul was attacking. This very philosophy that's deep within the self of every man. Now James, James magnifies the very same faith that Paul was talking about by showing what are the genuine and necessary products and operations of that faith. He is in no way discounting it. But James is addressing, addressing the Christian life, our walk of faith, and giving us the idea of a living faith. And for him, for James, the test of this faith is the green shoot of a living seed from within, meant naturally to grow and produce fruit. And by this does faith prove itself to be living, lively, and active, he attacks the superficial faith that has no effect, no impact on the life of the person who claims to believe. For he understood that the works unto God are a natural response of the soul to God's infusion of faith and are something that are akin to a natural echo. They respond spontaneously to this inward act of faith. And this is what James is saying, that this must be seen in the lives in order for us to know. And there are examples of this throughout the Word of God, but before we go and deal with any of those, let's take a, a look at the words that are used within the Word of God. In the New Testament, the word is pistis, and the verb form is pisteo. And it means to believe. 
and they are of the same active root word but the verb form which is the form that is is almost always used and is the form that James uses is an action verb to believe is to have faith it is an affirmative action you cannot have faith without this action or work or response within your body your soul of believing that's what James is saying when he says faith without works is dead faith that has no action no response in the believing heart is a dead faith it is an inadequate faith and if we look to the use of faith in the Old Testament and this might in itself be kind of instructive that the noun comes through in the King James Version only twice as faith but the same words immune and immunah are used over a total of 54 times in the Hebrew text and they are translated as faithful righteous steady faithfulness faithfully stability and verily and the primary context of the use of these words is to convey the idea of believing in actively and an active trusting in God with with honor with loyalty with integrity as well as God's active integrity when dealing with mankind here again it is over overwhelmingly they are words of action not words of simple contemplation in the Old Testament my friends is it is a faith that is confessed professed and visibly demonstrated in the attitudes and actions of the patriarchs we find no application of a patriarch who is described as having faith or trust in God who did not demonstrate it through some attitude or action that was motivated and brought on by that faith and trust there again these my friends are the works of faith Abraham believed God Jacob wrestled with God. Moses obeyed God. Jonathan loved God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego trusted God. Isaiah stepped out for God. David prayed and sang to God. Notice the verbs within my examples. They are all active, participating, personal verbs in their believing, wrestling, trusting, obeying, and loving. They were actively involved in giving unto God in response to the deep well of faith he had given them. These are their works, my friends. All were great men of faith whose works were given fully unto God from the depths of their heart through the life he had nurtured there. And they were intended only for God. Any outward manifestation that overflowed to others around them and there indeed was, was simply the overflow of the fruits of the righteousness God returned into their hearts. You see, our works, my friends, are not unto our fellow men, but unto God. This builds the deep roots required to bear fruit in His abundance. The things we do for others are a manifestation of our fruit, not our works. They are two entirely different things. And this misunderstanding has caused much confusion within the body of our Lord's. Works are what we return to God in the Spirit. It is a giving of ourself continuously to Him. A daily sacrifice, if you would. Works are the inward manifestation and response of our faith that produces the fruit which is the outward manifestation of our faith. One of the clearest descriptions of the relationship between faith and works as taught by our Lord is included in the Gospel of John. Here Jesus describes good works as the natural fruit that is produced by a tree as a result of its very nature. 
I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Those who abide in or have faith in Jesus Christ will bear fruit. And any work that takes place outside of this context, works of the law, works of the flesh, are of no redemptive value. You see, an apple tree bears apples because it, is, because it is the nature of the tree to do so. Likewise, a believer bears fruit of the Spirit because it is the nature of the Spirit within all of us to do so. This is how James can say, I will show thee my faith by my works. James is not referring to the keeping of Sabbath laws. He is referring to the works that are the fruits of the Spirit. Therefore, the logical conclusion here is, is if there is no fruit, there are no works. If there are no works, there is no living faith. This is what James was telling us. Works of the law that are the outward acts of ritual for the purpose of receiving merit are of no value, my friends, for attaining salvation. However, those who trust trust in and obey our Lord will produce works that are motivated by the Spirit that will serve to build up the kingdom of God. Our Lord described the fruit as those godly acts that arise out of a heart motivated by the love of God and its absence from the lives of those who claim to be believers is in fact an indication of a lack of true faith. Let me go a little further and talk to you about some discoveries in modern biology and physics that James would have been totally unaware of that indeed prove his very argument. Scientists have recently discovered a great deal about our DNA. All of us know this. But one of the most intriguing discoveries is that our DNA, all of us, is made up of a combination of sugars and phosphate. And that when they are in the presence of light, the very strands of our DNA not only reflect light, but they produce light over in abundance because of, because of the light that was placed in their presence. I'm kind of staggering through this. Let me take you to the book of Psalms, Psalms 19, verse 120. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. You see, my friends, when the word of God comes into the heart and the soul of a man, it gets a spontaneous, echoing response, clear down to the cellular level. The light of God brings its own witness, and that witness is instinctively responded to clear down to the very nature and core of our being which is in the DNA. This is why James said that a man should respond to the faith. There should be that echo. These are the works. Our only works that we have are to believe, to follow, these kind of things. The response of our inner being this is what James is talking about. You can see an example in the book of Isaiah. When Isaiah had his confrontation or meeting or vision, visitation of Almighty God when he was there in the temple. What was his response? To the light of God flashed into his soul when God said, Who shall I send? Instinctively, the echo and the response from the DNA cellular level up through the heart and the soul and the spirit was his work. Send me. I shall go. 
And through that singularity of work, that one work, all that Isaiah did and wrote came forth as fruits. And it is these fruits that have blessed men for 3,000 years and brought the word of God into their hearts. So you see, my friends, our very body testifies. The very laws of biology and physics testify to the truth of what James says. That when God comes upon us, there must be a work of response. For the faith is not a living faith. For a living faith must respirate. It takes in and it responds and gives out. There is no other way. And I'll close with a few words of Paul to demonstrate that there was no disagreement. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he said, Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. And my friends, when he gives us light, our whole body, from the cellular level, cellular level down, or cellular level up, excuse me, <laughs> responds instinctively so you see there was no disagreement after all Paul talks of a saving faith James speaks of a living faith for Paul faith is complete trust in obedience to our risen Lord. For James, faith is belief in Christ and his resurrection and the salvation he affords. And to both, the only works that matter come from within the soul and they are spontaneous acts of love that spring from the very fruits of the Spirit's entrance into our hearts. So always remember, my friends, there is one faith, one Redeemer, one living God, and one truth, and it does not disagree with itself. Amen. I thank you, Lord, and I praise your name this day. Oh, my friends, oh, my friends, trust always in the living God. Trust always in the unity and the wholeness of his revelation. And do not trust those who come to you in words of argumentation and contentiousness, who try to divide you away from the word of God, or who try to split the word of God from, among it, from within itself. These men know not the truth. They know not the living God. Trust always in he who has filled your heart. <laughs> I think I meant to say so much more. Until the next time, my friends, go always, go always in the strength of the living God, that his strength might always go in you. Until the next time, my friends, have a wonderful, wonderful day in the Lord. Amen. Goodbye.